Victoria Police Force presents D-24. From the files of the Victoria Police, for the first time, come these true stories of unceasing war against crime, of day and night vigilance that protects our life and our property, and of the nerve centre of the Police Information Bureau, D-24. Stop! Police here! Stop or I'll shoot! This is the true story of the feathered hat. This is a true story from the files of the Victoria Police. Only names, place names and dates have been altered. Most of Melbourne was asleep when Robert Atkinson started off for work one early morning in 1947. For Robert Atkinson was a dairyman, and it was up to him to see that milk was loaded onto the various carts to check the drivers off on their runs. He had been doing this sort of thing for years, and he was quite used to the lonely dark streets along which he walked from his home to the dairy. Always his routine was the same. He'd go along the lane at the side of the dairy, open the side gate, take a few steps to his office door and unlock it and go inside. And on this particular morning, he saw no need to do otherwise. So he walked down the lane, stopped at the side gate and opened it, went forward to the office door and put his key in the lock and tried to open the door. It's funny. The key turns all right, but the door's stuck. <coughs> now what the dickens is wrong with it? It's jammed tight. Having trouble, oh. mate? Who the devil are you? What are you doing here? Relax. Me and me mate here has been to a party. Didn't feel so good after, so we nipped inside the fence for a bit. Won't that door open? No, it won't. Something must be jamming it. Yeah. Oh, that's what's doing it. Hey? Huh? There's a screwdriver wedged underneath the door. <coughs> hey. You blokes know about this? No, we don't. Oh, yes, you do. But I can't take on the two of you. As Robert Atkinson ran down the lane to where he knew his drivers would be waiting for him, two bullets whistled past his head. He dived into the yard of the dairy before a third shot could be fired, but by the time he'd organised assistance, the gunman had fled. A search of the lane did reveal one interesting object, though. Hey, boss! Get a look at this! Uh, leather suitcase. Bring it inside, see what's in it. Ah, put it on the table. Now, let's see. Hmm. Well, every complete burglar should carry, eh? Jimmies, screwdrivers, pliers, the lot. Looks like there's two men business, eh? It certainly does. Oh, I'd better ring the police. You see the carts get on with their rounds, Jim. I'll stay till the police come. Want someone to stay with you? No, no, those fellas won't come back. I'll be right. Okay. Now, the police. What's the number? F O two double four. Oh, what's this? Hello. Is that the Peerless Dairy? Yeah, that's right. Is that you, Mr. Atkinson? Yes, who's there? This is Mrs. Fletcher. Oh. Good morning, Mrs. Fletcher. You're up early this morning? Yes, I am, and it's your fault. My fault? Yes. 
I'm not the complaining type of woman, as you know, Mr. Atkinson, but I really think you should show a little more consideration to your neighbours. Just what are you getting at, Mrs. Fletcher? Now, don't pretend you don't know. Look, I assure you I haven't the slightest idea. Is something wrong with the milk? No, there is not. Oh, Mrs. Fletcher, would you mind coming to the point and getting off the phone? I've had rather a worrying time this morning. You've had a worrying time? What about me? I'm a hard-working woman, Mr. Atkinson, and I need my sleep. I think it's most inconsiderate of you to let your men rush around outside my bedroom window at one o'clock in the morning like noisy schoolchildren. Oh, uh, hold on a moment, Mrs. Fletcher. Yeah, what is it, Jim? All the cats are off on the job, boss. Uh, I'll be getting along too. Uh, no, no. Wait a minute. I haven't had a chance to ring the police yet. I can't get rid of this stupid woman on the phone. Drive down to the police station as fast as you can. Sure. See you later. Right. Oh. Hello, hello. Are you there, Mrs. Fletcher? Look, I'm, I'm sorry if the men disturbed sorry. you, but... Uh... What's the use of you saying you're sorry now? The damage has been done, Mr. Atkinson. And I know I won't be able to go back to sleep tonight. Once I'm awake, I never can. It's really most unkind of you. And those two loud bangs. I'll be surprised if they didn't waken everyone in the neighbourhood. Two uh, bangs? Yes. And don't try to tell me you know nothing about them. They sounded like fireworks to me. And I don't think it's right that your men should play such childish pranks in the middle of the night. My nerves are not the best, Mr. Atkinson, as you should know. And when I heard those bangs, I almost thought for a moment there was a shooting going on right outside my bedroom window. There was shooting going on, Mrs. Fletcher. And then when I looked out of the window and saw that it was just your men... I what did you say, Mr. Atkinson? I said the bangs you heard were revolver shots. Oh, no. Not, not right outside my bedroom window. Not real shooting. Very real shooting. And you may be interested to know that two bullets missed my head by inches. Oh, but that couldn't happen here. It, 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 it couldn't. Now, take my word for it, it did. But, but why? I mean, who, who was shooting? I don't know who, but there were two men trying to break into my dairy. Oh. Uh, I'm afraid not. Then they might still be around here somewhere. They might, but I doubt it. Then you must do something, Mr. Atkinson. My nerves, they're not the best, as you should know, and I'm in the house alone. They might come in here. I don't think they will. But you can't be sure. Look, I've sent for the police and they'll be here any minute. Now, you just try to forget the whole affair. Oh, how can you talk like that? You know I can't forget it. Gunman! outside my bedroom window. Oh, look, Mrs. It's all Fletcher. It's very well for you to talk, Mr. Atkinson. You're a man. But I'm just a poor, helpless woman. Oh, I don't think you should have told me about it. I think it was most inconsiderate of you. And... Oh, go to the devil. Oh. Who's that? Police here. Oh, thank goodness. Huh. Get inside and shut the door. It's you again? Yeah. Shut up. What do you want? Shut the door and I'll tell you. Go on, shut it. I won't miss next time I take a shot at you. Well, now, what do you want? The suitcase. I don't know what you're talking about. No? I left a suitcase outside the lane. I want it. I, I haven't got it. You're a liar. Move out of the way. You're a fool to come back here. I'll wait till your drivers went off. Yes, yeah, but... Yeah, but what? Have you called the cops? Have you? No. No, I... I'd finish you right now if I thought you had. No! You was talking on the phone to someone. Who was it? No one. Uh, at least it wasn't the police. Who was it? Oh, just the woman across the lane. The shots woke her up. I only hope you're telling the truth. Uh, yes, I am. All right, then. Now, give us the case. Come on, I know it's in here somewhere. In that office. Then get it. Get it yourself. Get it, I said. All right. And I'll be right behind you. So no tricks. There it is. Oh, been right through it, haven't you? Put the stuff back and shut it. Move a bit faster, can't you? Why? You're getting nervous. Shut up. There. Now take it and get out. Just a word of warning before I do. If you try to ring the cops before I... Who's that? How do I know? 
Is it the cops? Well, how could it be? Where's that other door lead? Out of the backyard. Okay. That'll do me. Oh, I'm coming. Who's that? Police here. Mr. Atkinson? Oh, thank heavens you've come. Quick. He's just rushed out the back way. As the gunman ran out the back of the dairy, the policeman arrived at the side entrance. In a few moments, we'll continue this true story from the files of the Victoria Police. This is a true story from the files of the Victoria Police. Only names, place names and dates have been altered. The unknown gunman who'd fired two shots at dairyman Robert Atkinson and then returned to the dairy to retrieve his suitcase hurried out through the back door as Constable Osborn arrived at the side entrance. Atkinson quickly told him what had happened. He... He ran out the back way. And where does that lead? Into the lane, further down. He'll have to run back this way. There he goes now. Right. Stop. Police here. Stop or I'll shoot. Stop or I'll shoot. Did you get him? No, I couldn't get a decent shot at him in the dark. Where'd he go? Into the garden of this house and then over the fence into the park. He moves fast, that chap. Be like looking for a needle in a haystack to find him among all those trees. You're not going to let him get away. And not if we can help it. It'll take more than one to catch him. Oh, here's the patrol car now. They'll make a thorough search of the whole district. But the search was fruitless. Under cover of darkness, the gunman escaped. The next act in the drama took place a few hours later. Gerald Baxter, a Collingwood chemist, had only opened his shop for a few minutes on that same morning when two men walked in, one limping badly. Good morning, gentlemen. Something I can do for you? Yeah. I'm in a bit of trouble. Oh, yes? There's somewhere we can talk privately. Well, I, I suppose you could come into the dispensary. Okay, lead the way. Come on, Mick. Here we are. Now, what's the trouble? I've got a bullet in me heel. A bullet? Yeah. Can you just take it out? Well, I, I don't know. Let me have a look at it. Take off your slipper. Yeah. Mighty sore. There, see? Hmm. Nasty wound. How'd you come by that? Does that matter? Just get it out for me. It hurts. Yes, I'm sure it does. But how did it happen? There was an accident. Does that satisfy you? No, it doesn't. You'll have to tell me exactly how it happened. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, with... shut up, Mick. I'll tell you how it happened. We was at a party last night. Everyone got a bit full. Some galah was messing about with a revolver. It went off by mistake. That's all. You're sure it was a mistake? It was a mistake. Now, will you take it out? Why didn't you go to a hospital or to a doctor? I didn't want no questions asked. Someone might get into trouble. And it was only an accident. Hmm. Well, I... I don't think I can help you. Hey? Let me talk to him. I said to keep quiet, Mick. Now, look here, Mr. Baxter, we don't want to make no trouble. But I've got to get this thing out of me foot. It's mighty sore. And it was only an accident, so just take it out for me, will you? And then forget about I'm it. I'm sorry, but it's not really in my line. It's a doctor's job, and I'm a chemist. The bullet's in a good way. You can't play around with things like that. Oh, I wish I was in Sydney. I'll get someone to take it out quick enough. I can give you the name of a good doctor, if you like. I don't want no doctors. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about it. Who's the doctor? Dr. Bennett. Lives just round the corner. Is he a good black? Very. Will he ask a lot of questions? He'll want to know how it happened. 
It's the law, you know. You won't change your mind and do it for me. Sorry? No. Why now? Come on, Mick. We'll go around and see the doc. But the men had no luck with the doctor either. He recommended that they go to a public hospital, but that, of course, was not to their liking. Meanwhile, detectives were busy on the case, and a little later in the morning, it was the subject of discussion in the CIB muster room. Now, these two articles were found in a garden near the scene of the shooting early this morning. This suitcase and this grey hat. They were both obviously dropped by the offender when he was being chased by the constable. No marks of identification on either of them. Just hold that hat up a bit higher, will you, Sergeant? Mm, there you are. Can you see it clearly now? Turn it round a bit. That all right? Yeah, that's fine. I know that hat. Eh? It belongs to Frank Davies. You sure? Almost positive. Here, let me have a close look at it. Hmm. That's Frank's all right. He was wearing it when Jack Roberts and I booked him for consorting last week. See those bright red feathers in the band? Well, I made some remark about them at the time, and he said he'd pull them out of his parrot. Do you mean that? Yes. That hat belongs to Frank Davies. A valuable clue at last. And Davies fitted the dairyman's description of the intruder. And so the call went out. D-24. D-24, calling all cars and stations. The following man is wanted for questioning in connection with the shooting at Armadale early this morning. Frank Davies. Repeat, Frank Davies. And the public got to know of the shooting too, by means of the newspapers and broadcasting stations. And all the publicity rang a bell with one man in particular. Hello, Detective Sergeant Palmer. My name's Baxter. I'm a chemist. Yes, Mr. Baxter. Two men came to my shop in Collingwood this morning. One of them wanted me to remove a bullet from his foot. Oh? Uh? I might be quite mistaken, of course, but, but it occurred to me that it might have some connection with the shooting at that dairy in Armadale this morning. The constable fired shots, didn't he? Yes, he did, but uh, he didn't think he hit the man. Oh. Well, then I'm probably wrong about the whole thing. Not at all. Let me have all the details, Mr. Baxter, and we'll follow it up from there. And, of course, Baxter's description tallied with that of Frank Davies, too. And now the police were sure they were on the right track. And now they knew that the man they were looking for had a bullet wound in the foot. And there was one thing the chemist told them that greatly interested the detectives. It was this. The chap said to me that he wished he was in Sydney because there was somebody there who'd take the bullet out for him. And so, when no trace of the wanted man could be found in Melbourne, details of the case were flashed to Sydney and detectives there promptly made inquiries. Hello, Detective Sergeant Palmer. Sydney CIB calling you, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Put them through. There you are. Go ahead. Hello. Sydney? Yes. This is Sergeant Forbes. Hello, Sergeant Palmer here. What can I do for you? I think we can do something for you. About your inquiry about Frank Davies. You've got something on him? We've had a report from the Sydney Hospital. A man who could be Davies went in there for an X-ray to his foot this morning. Said he had a bullet in his heel. Did he? That sounds promising. Mm, well, he'd left before we got wind of it, of course, but... He's made an appointment to have it removed by one of the doctors tomorrow. Good. So we'll have a couple of men there too. Thanks, Sergeant. We look forward to good news from you tomorrow. <laughs> Detective Sergeant Palmer. Sydney CIB on the line, Sergeant. Same caller as yesterday. Oh, I've been expecting him. Put him through. There you are. Go ahead. Hello, Sergeant Forbes. Yes. That you, Palmer? Yes. Did you get our man? Sorry, no. Eh? Oh, we were at the hospital all right, but Davies didn't turn up. I think the doctors must have asked him too many questions, and he thought better of keeping his appointment. Oh, well, it can't be helped. Uh, there's one thing I did find out today, though. Yes? 
One of the doctors told me that Davies wanted the appointment for today so that he could get back to Melbourne in a hurry. Any idea how he'll be travelling? No, I'm afraid not. All right, thanks for your trouble, Sergeant. We'll keep a lookout at the airport and at Spencer Street. Now arriving at number one platform, the spirit of progress from Albury. Now arriving at number one platform, the spirit of progress from Albury. I was hoping Davies is on board, Jim. Three days of watching this platform's not my idea of fun. No, nor mine. Looks like a full train, too, just to make it harder. Hey. What? A girl. Isn't that Peggy Morton? Yes, it is. She's Davies' girlfriend. Looks like she's been to Sydney with him. And look, just coming out of the carriage behind her, chap with a stick, a carpet slipper on his foot. Come on, Jim. That's Frank Davies. So you were shot at a party, Davies? Yeah, I was. Who shot you? I'm not saying. Why not? If it was an accident, as you claim, there'll be no trouble for whoever fired the shot. I'm still not talking. You're going to a lot of trouble to protect someone, aren't you? All the way to Sydney and back just to keep it quiet? That's my affair. Well, did you get the bullet taken out of your foot or not? I'm not saying. I think we'd better find out. Will you come with us to the Royal Melbourne Hospital and have your foot x-rayed? Why not? All right. But before that, there's one other thing. What? The dairyman and the Armadale constable say they can identify the man who was at the dairy. We want you to take part in an identification parade. Do what you like. All right. Let's do it right now. The dairyman and the constable quickly identified Davies when he was placed in a lineup. Later, an x ray at the Melbourne Hospital showed that the bullet was still in his foot, but Davies refused to have it removed. And his grim determination to prevent that bullet falling into police hands was made clear at his subsequent trial in the Melbourne Supreme Court. Uh, Davies. This X-ray picture, which was taken on your return to Melbourne, shows a bullet in your foot. There's no bullet in your foot now, is there? No. Who removed it? I did. You took it out yourself? Yeah. Oh, what with? A pocket knife and a pair of tweezers. Did you ever hear of septicosis? Eh? Blood poisoning. Yeah, I have. Well, then you know that it's possible to be poisoned by dirt getting into a wound like that. Yeah, I do. Then I put it to you that you removed the bullet yourself to prevent it from being examined. You knew that the police ballistics expert could prove that bullet came from Constable Osborne's pistol when he was pursuing the man at the dairy. No, no. And further, that bullet could prove that that man was you. The jury agreed with this and decided that Frank Davies was indeed at Robert Atkinson's dairy on that eventful night. And so he went to jail. The police had successfully concluded another difficult case. And we must be grateful that such men are on the job for 24 hours of every day, protecting our lives and our property. Let us then always cooperate with them, wherever and whenever possible. Only names, place names and dates were altered in this true story. It was dramatised from the files of the Victoria Police by Roland Strong, who now says goodbye until the same time next week, when there'll be another true story in this series, D24, which is brought to you by the Victoria Police Force and produced in the studios of Hector Crawford Productions by Dorothy Crawford.